So anecdotal evidence, stories from your friends, single cases uh, that you can remember, intuitive guesses, recollections from your own experience are usually not good enough grounds for drawing conclusions about trends, rates, or large-scale phenomena. So um, the fact that your friend had something happen to her when she went to the hospital, um, you can't... Um, you can believe your friend that that happened, but you can't make any assumptions about uh, the way that all hospitals are from um, your friend's experience. So the anecdotal fallacy is when people make sweeping generalizations on the basis of one case. Um, you'll have to uh, think of a time when a friend or you yourself or someone you know um, use the anecdotal fallacy to make some um, sweeping generalization based on just um, one case or one story. Um, so a scientific approach, on the other hand, requires statistical reasoning um, as well as causal reasoning. We'll talk about causation next time, but today we'll talk about integrating um, statistical reasoning with inductive reasoning. So. Um, Let's compare the scientific statistical approach with the anecdotal approach. So suppose that um, you're at Thanksgiving dinner and the um, topic of nuclear power comes up and someone says nuclear power is too dangerous, um, my uncle died in an accident at Wolf Creek and then uh, the person says people die every year in accidents at nuclear power plants and that's uh, the fact that the person knows someone that died in a nuclear power accident makes it seem as if uh, nuclear power is um, a very dangerous type of work. Um, perhaps it is dangerous to the public, but um, let's just look at this this one argument for workers. Um, so um, the the scientific approach looks at the actual actual statistics. So so look at the actual statistics here. Um, uh, last year, I think this is data from 2015. Um, three out of the 120,000 nuclear power workers died, oh, in 2010, so that's um, 0 .0 point, 0 0.0025% of the workers. Compare that to um, coal miners, where 48 out of 82,000 died. Um, that's almost twice as dangerous, coal mining work is almost twice as dangerous as um, nuclear power work. So. Um, the fact that your friend's uncle died in an accident makes it seem as if nuclear power is, is the most dangerous type of energy work, uh, but, it's, but um, if you look at the data, um, if you compare that to coal mining, coal mining is twice as dangerous. Um, another problem with the anecdotal fallacy is that your own sampling will not be representative because um, you are situated in a certain context. So suppose that... Um, uh, suppose that you are an emergency room nurse, or suppose you ask an emergency room, uh, room nurse about the dangers of recreational drugs, and the nurse will tell you all sorts of horror stories because her sample comes from uh, all the people she sees in the um, emergency room who have OD'd on drugs. So she has a, a skewed sample. The only people she ever sees um, are going to be people who have um, abused drugs and um, are having horrible effects. Um, her sample is the people in the emergency room. So um, your personal encounters with cold remedies, beauty treatments, power plant workers, or drug addicts is not necessarily re uh, representative of everybody. Uh, not representative at all. So, um, so here's just further. Your intuitions, personal history, or stories aren't going to be reliable indicators of any sort of trend specs or large-scale phenomena. So perhaps you went to um, San Francisco and you got mugged. It would make you feel as if San, uh, San Francisco is a really dangerous place. And here's the anecdote. San Francisco is way more dangerous than Sacramento. My husband got assaulted while he was walking down the street. But then uh, you can compare the assault rates for the two cities. San Francisco, two and a half uh, per thousand versus the assault rate in Sacramento, four and a half per thousand. So Sacramento is twice as dangerous, about twice as dangerous as uh, San Francisco.